an all-electric GT40 replica. This car started out its life as a 1968 Fiberfab Vulture. It was a kit car that had never been completed. I purchased the car two years ago in a pretty bad shape. The car was basically a nice body, fiberglass body, and a rusted frame. I took it down to the bare frame, again, building it back up to the electric car. Let me show you my car. The GT40 started out life as a 1967 Fiberfab Valkyrie kit car. The car body style was based on the 1967 Ford GT40 and used a simple ladder frame, Corvair 4-speed transaxle, and Corvair front suspension. Simple, lightweight, mid-engine design with tilt-up back for easy access to the batteries. The car was purchased on eBay and had been sitting outside unfinished for probably over 30 years. It was stripped down to the bare frame and rebuilt from the ground up. All of the parts were completely reconditioned and rust-proof. The car is powered by a NetGate Warp 9 series-wound DC electric motor, Cafe Electric Zilla 1K HV motor controller with a 168-volt pack. The Zilla motor controller is wired to a Linux and Bantu-powered computer in the dash, which has been programmed to display the RPM, pack voltage, pack amps, motor voltage, motor amps, and the amount of amp hours used. The battery pack is made up of 100 amp hour AGM batteries which were purchased used to test the car before eventually changing over to a lithium ion pack. The current pack weighs in at around 1200 pounds. The lithium pack will have about three times the capacity and half that weight. The motor is connected directly to the four speed transaxle without the need for a clutch. Though the car has four gears, the car has run 90% of the time in just third gear. The car has been tested to 85 miles an hour, but still had plenty of range to continue going faster after that. Calculations say that it should reach over 120 miles an hour. The car is charged by plugging into the J1772 connector, which is wired to a Manzanita microcharger. The connector is wired to make the needed communications connections that are required by the new public charging station which are being put in. At home, the cable can also be plugged into a standard 240 30-amp twist lock connector. For the complete story and lots more pictures of the car and the build process, visit evmania.com.